and welcome back to another Disney Princess Dress Analysis video. The focus of today's analysis will be Princess Belle, my personal favorite Disney princess. In this video, I'm going to be looking at both her cartoon dress and the one from the live action film because I have something to say for both of them. Let's start with the cartoon dress. So we can take a few context clues from the story in order to figure out when and where this film takes place. We know that it takes place in France because many of the characters are speaking French. And we know that it takes place before the French Revolution since the Beast is royalty and he still has his head. We also get some information from Gaston as he's talking about returning from war. We can infer that he is either talking about the Seven Years' War, which ended in 1768, or the War of Austrian Succession, which ended in 1748. This sets the film in the late 1700s, in the mid-Baroque period, more commonly referred to as the Rococo era. Fashion of this time is some of the most beautiful in history, in my opinion, of course. This fashion and of the dresses focused on intricacy, elaboration, and detail work, and fashion was really such an art form which I really appreciate. The most commonly worn dress of this time is the robe à la française, which consists of a narrow inverted bodice, which was achieved via boned stays, and a wide skirt, which was achieved using hoop skirts, or side hoops slash panniers, also known as fake hips, which helped to achieve the wide skirt. We can see many fairly accurate versions of the robe à la française in this opening scene from the Beauty of and the Beast live action movie. The cartoon dress, however, was not as accurate, and it's really a mishmash of all kinds of different styles from different time periods, so I'm going to try my best to break it down for all of you. The neckline slash sleeves of the bodice is reminiscent of a popular style of the 1650s with this gathered off the shoulder look. However, the sleeves of that time period would be longer, making the opera gloves that she wears in the film an unnecessary addition. You could also argue that this bodice fits in with the fashion of the 1850s, where the off-the-shoulder look was also very popular, and it was short-sleeved with gloves being worn, which fits in better with Belle's dress. It was so difficult for me to find a time period in which her skirt fit in. At first, I thought it would fit in with the skirts of the 1850s, seeing as skirts of that time were very layered. But upon closer examination, I determined that I, her dress is probably ruched and gathered vertically in order to achieve the look that we see in the film, um, which nowhere do we see that being done anywhere in history. I also looked at what was going on in fashion at the time in which the film was made and unlike Cinderella's dress that has some elements of the 1950s in it, Belle's dress doesn't bear any references to 80s or 90s fashion. I remember loving Belle's dress when the film first came out and thinking that it was so beautiful and she quickly became my f favorite Disney princess. And I understand that young girls may not have wanted to see a Disney princess with a tall wig wide skirt and a fake mole drawn on her face, but they probably could have gotten away with historical accuracy in the live action version of the movie, right? Well, no. I'm pretty sure that the costume designer of this film had some amazing ideas for Belle's dress, seeing as most of the costumes of the other characters are historically accurate. So this makes it all the more jarring when our main character is dressed in inaccurate clothing. The most annoying thing is that Belle chooses when to be accurate. Her peasant dress and even her little jacket from the beginning of the film are mostly accurate. So why are her wedding dress and ball gown so wrong? It all started when Emma Watson, bless her soul, decided not to wear a corset as a feminist motion, saying that she wanted Belle to be, and I quote, an active heroine. The problem that I see with this is that corsets are not meant to be these restrictive garments that are made to stifle women's freedoms and restrain, restrain them. They're meant to be supportive garments for the busts and the large skirts that women would be wearing at the time. And corsets were used to mold women's bodies to the fashionable body shape. 
corsets are made to fit you. If your corset is extremely uncomfortable, it is because it does not fit. And yes, corsets do slightly move your organs, but it is not permanent and it's similar to the way that being pregnant shifts your organs around slightly. Also, women at the time in which this film is meant to take place did not wear corsets. They wore boned stays, which were much more flexible of a garment. The difference between corsets and stays is that corsets are meant to mold your body and shape it to the stylish body shape of the time, whereas stays are simply used as supportive garments to support your busts and the large skirts that you be, would be wearing. And yes, they are boned or half boned, but they're not at all uncomfortable or restrictive garments and they were usually made out of fabrics that breathed quite easily. And even if she didn't wear stays, which she should be, the dress still could have had a lot more structure. She should be wearing panniers, which are basket-like undergarments that are tied onto the waist in order to help support and give shape to the very wide skirts. The wider your skirt, the higher your status in society. And seeing as the beast is a prince and is French royalty, Belle would have some access to some pretty wide skirts. On top of the pannier, you would be wearing a petticoat, which just by looking at this dress and how structuredless it is, we can tell that she is not, which is really disappointing considering that this is a detail that they even included in the animated version of the dress. This dress had hardly any shape to it and I honestly do not understand the purpose of this whole transformation scene. Why did they decorate the dress with gold flowers? Belle was always the most down to earth of all the Disney princesses. Instead of her friends being talking animals, they were books and later inanimate objects. So this whole whimsical naturey transformation scene just does not make sense in the context of the character. And why is she wearing an ear cuff? I just straight up don't get that. When we look at this dress in regards to historical accuracy, we can see that it is not much better than the animated one. We can see that this dress much better fits in with the clothing of the 1850s with the layered skirt and short sleeved bodice. The skirt of the dress is made up of many different lengths of the layered yellow fabric in order to get the layered look. The bodice of this dress, however, does not fit in with 1850s fashion, seeing as it is very cone-shaped and angular, which actually fits in with the late 1700s fashion, but only in shape. That's where the comparison end. This style of bodice is not seen really, seen really anywhere in fashion and therefore is historically inaccurate. Dresses of that time period were more like long coats and they closed in the front using a stiffened piece of fabric called a stomacher that was either pinned or sewn onto the front of your dress in order to keep it closed. When I first watched this film, I have to admit I did love the dress and thought that it was beautiful and a very well done interpretation of an animated piece of clothing and turned it into a live action piece of clothing. However, I've recently become infatuated with historical fashion and become a lot more interested in it. And now that I know what she should be wearing, I just can't see this dress the same way anymore. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, costume designer for this film, Jacqueline Duran, said that it was a conundrum in order to costume Belle's dress and incorporate feminist elements into this design. So the dress that we did end up getting was a lot closer to the animated version of the dress than what the actual clothing of the time is. In conclusion, these dresses are not at all historically accurate and they seem to be focused a lot more on elegance and beauty, which does not always equal accuracy, unlike what my younger self used to think. My favorite version of this dress, personally, is the 1991 animated version of the dress. It just has so much more structure and looks a lot more like a ball gown than this newer one. It's just a lot more structured and it really gives off like a liquid gold feeling instead of like a flowy yellow picnic dress. What version of the dress do you all prefer? I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.